What I want to do in this video is talk about what you're actually doing when you give a person maintenance fluids, and a little bit about how you can choose what type of maintenance one to give. In another video, I'll actually go into the details, meaning the numbers of how all of this is derived. For this video, let's assume that we're giving maintenance fluids to a completely healthy patient and make things as simple as possible. First things first, let's talk about the indications for why we would give maintenance fluids to our patients. You want to give maintenance fluids whenever a person is not able to eat or drink. Common reasons will be being MPO or nothing by mouth because of being pre-op or being prepared for any other major procedure. Another indication is being MPO from having acute pancreatitis. Another one is being MPO from having bowel obstruction being MPO from severe nausea and vomiting, or being MPO from having difficulty swallowing. Because the patient is not receiving his or her daily water and salt needs by mouth, you will have to provide those by giving maintenance fluids by IV. The four major substances that you need to worry about are sodium, potassium, water, and some would also argue calories. Now, I'm going to tell you up front that there are numerous ways and combinations to replace these four essential substances, and in theory, you can mix and match however you want as long as you're covering for the minimum amount needed daily. Since we're talking about healthy patients, as long as you don't give too much more than the minimum, it won't really be a problem because, for example, if you give more sodium than you need to, the person's kidneys will just adjust and excrete the excess sodium. Now, let's lay out all the options we can use to replace each of the four major substances, and I would recommend looking at our Intro to Fluids video if you're not familiar with different types of fluids yet. Remember that all of this is assuming an average 70 kilogram male, and all of this can change depending on extremely high or low weights. Now, this next slide is going to be a little bit tricky, but I'm going to help orient you. Across the top, we have the major four substances, sodium, potassium, water, and calories. Let's first talk about sodium. I won't go into details why now, but I will tell you that you need a sodium concentration of at least 40 milliclovins per liter to meet your patient's minimum sodium needs for the day. Now, there are many ways you can do this. You can give your patient normal saline, which has a sodium concentration of 154, or half normal saline, which has a sodium concentration of 77, or even quarter normal saline, which has a minimum concentration of 38. Alternatively, you can try lactate ringers, which has a sodium concentration of 130. All of these work because they have a sodium concentration at or above 40 milliclovins per liter. Now let's talk about potassium. In order to meet your patient's minimum potassium need for the day, you need to provide a potassium concentration between 20 and 40 milliclovins per liter. You can do this by adding 20 to 40 millimoles of KCL into a one liter solution, such as normal saline. Alternatively, you can give lactate ringers, which has a potassium concentration of four. Now, you're probably thinking four is less than 20, which means we're not giving the patient enough K. You're absolutely right. And this is where we start getting into the gray area. In short, something is better than nothing. And while replacing major salts is a good thing to do, it's not an absolute necessity. Just think about all the stories of people not eating for weeks or sometimes months and surviving. In the end, water is more important than salt. Next is water. I won't go into details of how much water you need to provide, but just know that pretty much any solution you give will have water. So for example, normal saline, half normal saline, quarter normal saline, and lactate ringers will all provide water. The last major substance is calories, and this is where it gets interesting. D5W, or 5% dextrose in one liter of water, is the only real option used in practice although D10W is inferior in another option. However, if you want to give higher concentrations of dextrose, such as D15W, you'll need to put in a central line, which you don't want to do unless you have to. What you're trying to do by giving calories is not to cover the patient's entire daily caloric needs. In fact, you're only accounting for about 17% of the estimated daily caloric needs if you give D5W. Your real goal by giving calories is to prevent the body from breaking down muscles to provide calories, and D5W is enough to do this. 
Now that we've laid out our options, I'm going to show you what I mean when I say that there are many options to provide maintenance for it. Let's work over three examples. Example number one. Let's say I start with a bag of normal saline. So that normal saline is going to cover the water need as well as the sodium need. In order to cover for the caloric needs, I'm going to add 5% dextrose into the normal saline. And to cover the potassium need, I'm going to add in 20 millimoles of KCL. Example number two. Instead of using normal saline, I'm going to start with half normal saline, which covers my water need as well as my sodium need. I'm going to add in D5 again to cover for the caloric need, and I'm going to add in 30 millimoles of KCL this time to cover the potassium need. For my last example, I'm going to start with lactator ringers, which covers my water need and my sodium need. It covers a little bit of my potassium need, and I'm happy with that for now, but I'm going to add in 5% dextrose into the lactated ringers to cover for the caloric need as well. So for all three of these options, you are providing the patient with sodium, potassium, water, and calories. Just a few more points. The best theoretical maintenance fluid is D5, half normal saline, plus 20 to 40 milliequivalents of K or potassium. And I will talk about this in another video. But on a practical basis, if you're on surgery, you're probably going to give lactate ringers. And if you're on medicine, you're probably give normal saline or some variation of normal saline. And finally, here are our take home points. Please take a few moments to pause and read these over for yourself. Thanks.